Hello everyone. In this lecture, we'll see the detailed construction of a DC machine through animation. Before we go to the construction, I would like to brief you the operation of a DC machine. Let's take, for example, DC motor. The principle of operation of a DC motor is, if a current carrying conductor is placed in a magnetic field, it experiences a force. So I'm taking a magnet, and I have a coil, there is a battery. So I'm giving current to this coil through this battery and I'm placing this coil in presence of a magnetic field. See, coil is moving. If I remove the magnet, coil has stopped. If you place a magnet, coil is moving. So, this is the principle of operation. Based on this principle, let's construct a DC machine a little robust. Because, of course, I can call this also, this also as a motor, but this is not so strong. If somebody lifts up, it comes out. So, we should design a motor little robust. In the same way, generator also have the same parts because principle of generator also just opposite to the motor. Principle of generator is if a rotating conductor is placed in a magnetic field, EMF will be induced. So what all we need is we need a magnet Magnets of two types, electromagnet or permanent magnet. And we need a conductor. There, and if it is a motor, we will give the current to the conductor. If it is a generator, current will, will take from the conductor. So, current will be there. And either in case of motor or generator, there will be rotation. So based on this, let's construct. Here I am considering two poles. Let's consider for the time being permanent magnets, which gives the magnetic flux. So we have a conductor which carries some current. So, rotates or moves. So basically we need to structureize this pattern. As we see, I cannot place these two poles, I cannot suspend them on air. There must be some structure, I should fit these poles into the structure. So let's take a structure. I had taken a structure called yoke. This structure is to support these poles. These are the poles, field poles. This is north pole, this is south pole. Again I said these poles could be of permanent magnet or electromagnet. In this case, I have taken permanent magnets. Now, what if I would like to have electromagnet? Because we know electromagnets are little flexible in terms of flux. I can control the amount of flux by changing the amount of current flowing through the electromagnet. Hence, it will be more easy to control. But in case of permanent magnet, value of flux is fixed. So we prefer to use electromagnets. So for electromagnet, we need to take an iron piece. Above that, we should make some winding and we'll give some current to the winding, like a simple solenoid. So let's take a coil. Now, this is, this is now an iron piece. 
Previously it was a magnet, permanent magnet, but now I would like to get this magnetic field through electromagnetic property. So I am placing the iron and I will put this coil onto this iron. Now, if you give current to that, where is that coil? Niche Okay, let's put it up. If I give current to this coil, current flows through this coil and this iron piece will act as a magnet. That's what the property of electromagnet. So our electromag again coil has gone. So as we noticed, every time I'm trying to put the coil, it falls down because there is no support for the coil to hold there. So let's change a bit. Let's take a coil. Let's take some structure. Now let me attach this to this. Now if I put this, yeah, it's fine. So this part is called pole shoe. So this pole shoe will help us to support this field coil. So this part of the pole, this part of the pole, we'll call it as pole core. This part of the pole is called as pole shoe. And this is our field winding. Okay. So, so far what we have seen is yoke, yoke is to support these poles because I cannot suspend the poles in air. So, I am taking help of one structure called yoke to place these poles. Now, this pole shoe is to support these field coils. And of course, there are some other purposes of this yoke as well as this pole shoe that we'll see later on very slowly. But for the time being, this is a supporting structure. So what we're doing is, we have this motor here. So we try to build the same. We keep giving some supports. Suppose I want to build a home. So for that, I need to prepare walls, roof, all these things. It's a structure, complete structure is to you know, everything will keep supporting. One is to support another, another one is to support another, like that. So here also, I'm using the same principle. We are putting some supports to the best. Now, so similarly, we have here also. So this is just a base, machine base. Now our setup is ready, magnetic flux is ready. So how do I place this conductor now? Again, I cannot place the conductor on in air, I cannot suspend them in air. So again, we should have a support for this conductor. So this structure is to support the armature conductors. And this so-called structure is called armature, armature core. And these are called as slot, and this is tooth. So in this slot, we'll place the conductors. So we'll place the conductors in these slots. So this is my conductor, and to support these conductors, to accommodate these conductors, I'm using one structure called armature. This will look like this in 3D. So you can see this armature and this rod, we'll call it as shaft. 
So what we have seen? We have seen yoke, we have seen pole core, we have seen pole shoe, we have seen field winding, armature conductor, armature core and shaft. So we will place more number of conductors in all slots for more output. Now suppose if you want to carry this machine from one position to another position. So I cannot just lift it up. Of course we use cranes for moving these big machines. So to hook the crane to the machine we'll have one bolt called I bolt. The function of this is to hook something into this which helps us to carry the machine to somewhere with the help of cranes. Okay, things are ready. That means we have a structure, nicely designed structure and we have armature. Now the point is, of course armature conductor, these conductors are supported by this armature structure but who will hold this armature? Where should I place this armature? My armature also cannot suspend in air. It has to be supported from somebody. So let's take that. So if I insert, we have this structure, yoke along with poles, armature and shaft will insert this here but again this armature will fall down onto this machine structure. There is no support for the armature. We cannot freely move this armature right now. So what we will do is, we will place on the both sides of this machine, we will place end rings. So this and this, they are called as end rings because I am putting them on both sides. So first, we will attach this structure. Now we will insert this armature into this, then this end ring. Now we have complete machine stack. We have a machine now which can rotate freely and which is robust, mechanically strong, everything works fine. Let's look into little more details. So I'm taking now the basic rough rough sketch, not a complete structure, I am simpl simplified form. We are taking poles, armature, conductors. Now whether it is a motor or a generator, this rotates. This is a end view and this is a side view of the same machine. Now whether it is a motor or a generator, these conductors need to carry some current but it is rotating, how can I give supply to this or how can I take the current out of this conductor? So we should have some mechanism to connect our stationary electricity into this rotating structure. So let's see. So we'll place now one ring which collects current from this conductor through this con through this part this ring will collect the current from this or maybe this ring will give the current to this conductor in case of motor you can see in end view also so i am connecting one conductor one piece conducting material through this collector ring this is called as collector ring or you may call it as slip rings Now, how can I take the 
or how can I give the current to this slip ring or collector ring? As machine moves, this ring also is moving, so it's fine. But now I should give current to this moving ring. So if I can give current to this moving ring, which in turn will supply to the conductor. So how can I connect electricity to this? So we'll do it through a brush. This is a brush which is stationary. This is a slip ring which is moving, which is placed onto the shaft. Complete this structure will rotate except the brush. Brush is stationary. So suppose some moving object is there. Brush is something of, you know, we'll place something on this moving object over here. So this brush or this slip ring rolls over this brush, which makes continuous electrical contact with the slip ring. So we have another slip ring also for taking both outputs, plus terminal and negative terminal. So later on, we'll see, we'll replace these slip rings with commutators that we already discussed in operation. How commutator will help us to convert, you know, AC to DC or DC to AC. So now what we understood is to supply current to any rotating object, we should have brush and slipping mechanism, which is not only useful here, this concept is useful in case of slipping induction motor also. So this is now the complete construction of a DC machine. Now what are the parts we have seen? We have a yoke. I said this yoke is to support this field coil and pole shoe is to support the field winding and if you notice this pole shoe is not only supporting the field winding it is also spreading the flux onto this complete armature because if you have only this much area of pole core only flux will be given to this portion only. But if I make this kind of structure, it will help us to spread the flux over the armature. So pole shoe has two functions. One is to support the field winding and next is to spread the flux. Yoke. This is to support the field winding, sorry, it is to support the field structure, pole structure. And also, this will act as protecting cover for the entire machine from mechanical damages. You know, it, it, it makes the machine very strong. It's like a protecting shield for the entire machine. Number three, it also carries a flux. So as flux is coming through this and will return through this path. So this yoke will offer less reluctance to the flux. Not only this yoke, this armature also offers less reluctance to the flux because flux is, this is a flux path. So as this is a flux path, Flux is flowing through this armature and flux is flowing through this yoke. So yoke is having three functions. One is it will act as a protecting shield for the entire machine. Number two, it carries the field flux. Number three, it will support the field structure or pole structure. Next, we know this armature moves or rotates. As you see, I am giving DC supply to the field 
so flux is constant or steady flux is there conductors are rotating of course armature also rotating we use silicon steel to make this armature why are we using steel because steel offers good magnetic properties so as flux is flowing through this armature it should have less reluctance so that's why i'm using steel now what is a silicon steel if you see steel we know ha steel is having three good properties one it is having good mechanical property two it is having good electrical property not so good but yeah it is having good conductivity also and it is having good magnetic properties so steel is having these three properties out of these three properties we need here good magnetic mechanical property of course it is required good magnetic property of course it is also required here but do we require this electrical property of the steel is it advantages or disadvantages it is definitely disadvantages because as this steel is moving and the flux is constant due to faraday's law there is a emf induced in this steel also of course emf is induced in the conductor as well as steel because steel is also a conducting material there is a rate of change of speed with respect to flux and to this steel so there is a emf induced in this armature and that emf is called as a dmf which leads to drive some currents they are called as eddy currents so we should reduce these eddy currents to reduce eddy currents we should not have good electrical properties of the steel so we mix 4 to 5% of silicon to the steel so that some of the electrical properties of the steel comes down and of course we cannot completely make it zero zero conductivity will reduce the conductivity of steel to some extent but still we have little more conductivity little conductivity is there because of adding silicon of course conductivity has reduced but not to much low level then to reduce it further we laminate this armature so we use laminations which helps us to reduce the area of cross section which will lead to increase the resistance hence eddy currents will be reduced here out of all these parts only armature core is laminated we don't have to laminate yoke because yoke is not rotating yoke is fixed and the flux is also steady flux constant flux so as there is no rate of change of flux there is no edmf in yoke likewise there is no edmf in pole core so they they don't have to get laminated even pole shoe pole shoe also not required to laminate it but yes we do laminate in special cases this pole shoe is laminated for a big machines because of some oscillations in the flux that we'll see in the next classes so normally in normal machines only armature is laminated no other part is laminated so to summarize this we have main principle that is we should have a conductor and we should have a magnetic field to structureize this these two we have this entire setup and here we discussed silicon steel why we we should add silicon to the steel 
so this is all about construction of a DC machine thanks for watching the video see you in the next class